how do howdy folks how are we all doing hope we're well um right as you can probably see we're in london uh, we're gonna work start working anyway from the tower hill area and work our way around it might not be an exact science it might not all be sort of tower hill uh pubs as such but it's all going to be very walkable from here no getting on tube we're going to walk everything from pub number one we're going to we're going to stay on foot until the end of the video no more jumping on and off so anything we do in this video you'll be able to walk to from tower hill area now pub number one hmm? that sounds like a challenge it's a challenge you know right pub number one holds a little special place in my heart because i was actually the holding manager here about 21 years or so ago. When it used to be run by SFI, who had litten trees and things like this, it was still called the Minories, uh, and it is in the railway arches, just here. But yeah, I was actually sent here for about a month as holding manager and DJ in the, uh, the back room a few times, so I'm quite looking forward to it. I've not been here since I left on that day. The last day of work for them was the last time I entered these premises. So I, for one, am very much looking forward to seeing how the old girl has changed. And we might get some food in here because Holly's hungry, as always. Minneries stop number one today. This place is still pretty incredible, and it's a, I think it's a wicked, wicked under the railway arches, the uh, the old grand stone floor and stuff in here. But it's just laid out in such a cool way. It's now a stone gate pub these days. I think they took the majority of SFI's uh, boozers, if I'm if I'm correct. Anyway, but look, it's a great place to watch all the sport. It's got some decent craft uh, and stuff on, and You'll even find some ales. But it just feels like a cool part of London, doesn't it? Seeing, being under the railway arches and things. And years and years ago, so when I, uh, when I was here, this room at the back that they obviously still hire out for corporate events was basically where the, uh, we had a, a DJ room and, and things like that. This was the old dance floor down here and a DJ box up in that corner. But you can hear the train going over over ground now. But being back in here, I love the place. It's one of those pubs I will always have a lot of time for and think it's a super looking pub. So much space. Being under the railway arches is brilliant. And it just it just honestly makes you think of London, doesn't it? This is what London and the old pubs we're all about. Fair play to Stonegate for not having ruined it or done anything too drastic with it. Still looks just as good as it always did. Come out of Minneries, um, head sort of back on yourself as though you were going towards. Uh, there is a big weather spoons called the Goodsman's Field. I'll try not to get run over just here, but uh, it seems a bit pointless us doing spoons today when there's going to be so many other great pubs for us to try and get through. So we're going to skip out Weatherspoons, but it is there if you want it. So I keep on walking past Spoons down that same road. We'll get to the Princess of Prussia. Just there. Beautiful little pub sandwiched in between bigger buildings, as you can see. But that is a classic London look for the exterior of a pub. Never been in this one myself, I don't think, so. Quite right, looking forward to it. Stop two, Princess of Prussia. Dates back to around the 1880s. It's gorgeous inside, just as gorgeous inside as it is from outside. Love all these, uh, these green leather seats and things. Good selection on. It wasn't called the Princess of Prussia, apparently, until after the First World War either. So that is when it took its current name. But look at this, it is absolutely stunning inside. And if you've not been into this one, I would wholeheartedly recommend coming and see it. And city centre beer gardens sometimes are few and far between, but not here. Because you've got a damn good one at the back just there, look. What a super looking, fantastic pub. And that is stop number two in the bag for today. See, aren't you glad I didn't take to Weatherspoons? Vicky, the landlady in there, absolutely uh, top lass, uh, lovely woman typical London landlady, which is, uh, which is perfect, isn't it? So, she told us their sister pub for Shepherd's Neem, which is the brewery. It's called the White Swan, and it was like a two minute walk. So we went down St. Mark Street, followed it along to here. So the White Swan is gonna be stop number three of our day. 
Uh, and again, we've been walking probably about 10 minutes in total so far. So yeah, sister pub uh, to that, and it's just as beautiful inside as uh, that one is. Some ales on, same lineup as we found in the Princess of Prussia, which obviously being the same brewery and same owners you would expect to find. But it's a very beautifully well presented pub again. Nice little back street. Wouldn't know unless you knew it was here, would you? Team are actually the oldest brewer in the United Kingdom, apparently. According to what the, uh, the mirror says in the uh, in the pub, anyway. So every day is a school day. I didn't know that, so, you know. Always learning, even me, always learning. One thing I love most about London is you don't have to walk very far to get to the next pub. So, we've walked, oh, 100 yards down that road, and there is the Black Horse, and just over there, Layman Street Tavern. So, up next for us will be the Black Horse, and that is stop number four of our day. Compact little pub, this one. Uh, so established 1810, according to in here. It is a nice looking little pub, so you've got some good uh, little choices on there. Actually, the icebreaker pail is always quite nice. Good can choice and bits and pieces. And it's just a, a sweet little side street pub again. So one of those that, again, wouldn't necessarily think to come off the main drag. But it's well worth a visit. So as you saw, really not far to come from the Black Horse. For Lehman Street Tavern, straight across the road. Stop number five? Five. five. How do I lose count so early on? Nice in here, not what I was expecting at all from the cable. Ciders, wine ale. Loads of choices on the taps. One from Daya, though I do really like. Very smart, very snazzy looking place and some cool loads all of the uh, all of the beaver town range but it is pretty damn cool isn't it it's a really cool looking bar stylish modern dog friendly i love it i like it a lot straight out of there hang a left walk again 20 yards if that and it's the a board for the running horse alongside some absolutely gorgeous horse sculptures to be honest so running horse is Obviously a newish build pub. Yeah. Three, uh, more, down there, oh, more horse sculptures up there apparently. But the running horse you'll find just here. So it is, I've counted now, stop number six of the day. The running horse. Yeah, definitely a lot more modern thing, a new, a new vibe type place. It's been nicely kitted out. The uh, tanks and things are, are quite cool, aren't they? So got one ale on, London Fields. I hadn't seen that before, but the Battle Sea Brewery stuff. I've never had the Battle Sea pale ale, so we're having, we're having that one. But it has been very nicely kitted out in here. Certainly can't say that it hasn't. Another whopping, oh, hold on, right, just past where that sign is, is where the horse statues are, and there. It's the Oliver Conquest. So start number seven. So, yeah, you I mean, You've got to love how close everything is in London, haven't you? I love London. I want to move to London. What do you think, wife? Not for me. Divorce, here we come. Cool. Little pub. Loads of gins, like hundreds and hundreds of gins. And it's like that. No ales on, but set this off my tap. I see a craft can. I think yeah. down there, so I want to find a craft can of something that I've never had before called a brewery by uh, Forest Road Brewing, London, Sesh IPA, which is quite nice. I'm not sure about all this walking. Must have walked for at least two minutes this time without seeing a pub. I'm thirsty, man. Damn you, London, for the pubs being so spread out. Anyway, there's our next port of call. So yeah, we've walked for, I think, probably three minutes. If that's, so we're still walking down that Lehman Street, L-E-M-A-N, towards the railway bridge, and it will be the Brown Bear, a stop number eight of the day. Look, really old school, really, really old school, which I like. Moretti Guinness Brixton Lager, in the old, uh, the old horseshoe type bar that you found in a lot of old London pubs. Love the bit above it and stuff as well. Can watch all the sport in here. Kind of ales on. I'm going for that London Glory. I know it's Green King, but I've never had it, so I'm going to untap it. So I'm going to have that. And Carling, but you know. Oh well. Gorgeous front of the bar. Out of Brown Bear, cross the road, hang a right, then Royal Mint Street. Uh, for another little sort of back street boozer that 
we'll probably get missed again on the main drag through uh, an incredibly busy cycle path um, on here but the pub is the artful dodger uh, and it's like that i would imagine this is probably another locals type pub much like the brown bear was definitely a locals one so artful dodger an old uh, wholesale and retail warehouse by the looks of things now trading asabuza stop nine bit about coming into london sometimes is the side street back street booze because they are the friendliest you meet real people you, in these real pubs real people now this as i said this is a little locals pub but it's so friendly they, they like literally i, I, I got i got abuse in a minute i walked in which is exactly what you want it's proper pubs proper people and it's little boozer where i tell you what you come in here you come in here as a stranger you'll probably end up leaving here as a friend it's one of those it's one of those type of boozers that you've got to come and have a look at it is a wicked little pub come and see it that is proper authentic london isn't it Again, the, the the people that run that, dead friendly. It's just, it's just, it, it's something, you don't get that sort of banter many, many places. And I said, I, I've got a, a love for London and stuff anyway. But I thought that Artful Dodger was absolutely brilliant. I would hang out in there, even though the beer definitely isn't the sort of stuff that I would normally choose to drink. I could get on a spirits in there, have a game of pool and a bit of banter. Right, two minutes down the, down the road then, so I come back onto that Lemar Street turn right. We were on the other side of that railway bridge, we went down that way to the Artful Dodger, come back on yourself to where the railway bridge is, walk a little bit down here, and you'll come to Sir Sidney Smith. That is a classic, old school looking London pub, isn't it? And that's stop nine. No, this place is pretty cool. Good ales and stuff on. No problem, boss. Look how cool this place is. Yeah, I like this a lot. I've got no time for places like this. This one's another bell. I, I love sitting like at the, the door and just surveying an old-looking London pub. Like, look how old this this looks. Sort of sit back here. And look at the, uh, the brickwork and the walls, and you have a scan around. Like that is what an old-school side street London pub should look like. Isn't it? That's a beautiful scene. I think this is a great pub. Okay, we've walked for about five minutes this time. So we're coming down towards the river um, to uh, cut round on ourselves and go back along and come up the other side in a few minutes. So walking down through some very, very pricey looking, lovely looking flats and things though. And there's a, another purpose built one in the base of, in the base of like a, tower type thing it's called the more town bell uh, and there's absolutely no point in missing it out if we're going this way anyway because we're working our way uh, around to the bottom anyway to get to the dickens in so we might as well do this opposite of waitrose yeah purpose built grand looking thing but the more town bell then is up next stop number 11 you know what it's nice in it dartboards over on the far side bricks and pale neck oil watch of bones lager which i do like no ales on, which is a shame, so I've also got the capability to have them, but pool tables, screens everywhere, check chessboard floor, but you know what, it is actually a lot better than I'd expected. What is it? Good girl. Oh bear, what are you doing? Are you rolling? <laughs> such a clown. Good girl, Maddie. Ready? Come out the back way from where we just were, go into the the little bit of flats that overlook the harbour. And I mean this, this is probably one of the most beautiful places in central London, I'd say, for like a view of, of somewhere to live. Like if you're in central London, you look out and say, I mean, these, I dread to think how much these flats cost, but look how beautiful that is as a whole. But the, uh, the pub that we're going to, that sits on this is one, I'm, so I'm glad that we've got here while it's still light as well. Yes, it would be a real shame not to be able to show this in all its its true glory. This is the Dickens Inn, and it is one of those iconic London pubs. I think this. Just look at how amazing a place. This whole thing around here is absolutely breathtaking. From the from the, the boats on the harbour. To the architecture around it, the flats, the, the the restaurants and things over on that side of the uh, 
that side of the harbour. But yeah, look at that. The iconic Dickens Inn. This is a, this is a 10 out of 10 a must visit, I would say, for, if, you, if you're down this way in London and you've never been to the Dickens, you really should be, because that <laughs> is one of the most beautiful looking buildings you'll see as a pub anywhere. I'll take you for a wonder, because the place is just as impressive inside as it is, to be honest. Well, there you go, down here into one of the many bars that you'll find in here and space. Long, narrow, and set across multiple floors. So this place is just absolutely iconic as a, as a venue at a, at a London pub. The whole place is a bit magical. It's a bit of a magical feel to it. It's dog friendly. Plenty of stuff on the taps. Food that go, literally goes all day. The only problem I've got with it is they the one ale on. Well, obviously they've got plenty of taps there with nothing on them, which is a real shame. But it is one of those, look at the, look at the doggy as well. It's one of those that's just beautiful. So, whatever it is, you can hope to find in a London pub that's iconic, stands out and offers something that looks a little different. You'll find it in it. Well, uh, we'll go up the floor. It doesn't look like we're gonna get to film anything up. Up on the middle floor is uh, what they call the Pickwick Bar. But it's, uh, it's not open tonight, but it's gorgeous. And again, sometimes you can sit out here on this, uh, on this balcony, but we can't get out there. And upstairs is a restaurant area that is pretty beautiful. So you can sit and dine out on there. Yeah, it's a gorgeous looking restaurant space. So, great looking place. What a shame we can't sit out on the, on the terrace today though. There are some beautiful boats and yachts and stuff in this. <laughs> Let's look at that. Yeah, oh, how the other half live. <sighs> we could afford one of these if we didn't spend all our money on beer. That's lovely. That is lovely, they're all lovely. Uh, right, anyway, back towards Tower Hill Station now. So we've got about a 10 minute walk. Uh, and then a nice little circuit around the other side uh, of Tower Hill Tube Station for you. So, see you there in a second. Actually, I won't see you when we get there because it would be pretty naughty of me not to show Tower Bridge all lit up beautifully at night, wouldn't it? As we walk past. Down here by the river is definitely one of my favorite parts of London, certainly for look and everything else, so. It's beautiful when it's all lit up, isn't it? Headed to pubs, I promise, but Holly's been a tourist because we're obviously outside the Tower of London now, walking along here, so Holly's just been a tourist and getting photos of the Tower of London entrance and stuff. We are going to pubs, I promise. Minute walk, but what a walk. So, yeah. walk all the way round Tower of London, basically. Come up to the pub. Uh, there's weather spoons again next door if you do want to do weather spoons, but come up to the pub called Traitor's Gate. Obviously takes its name from one of the actual gates on the Tower of London. That's gonna be our 12th stop of the day. Beautiful, beautiful old traditional pub, Traitor's Gate. So let's go and uh, tick that one off, because uh, we both need a wee after that walk. Beer choices here are much better. Decent stuff among the taps, anyway, including some craft. River Town, uh, I, I encountered in St Albans a few weeks ago and absolutely loved. So there are some good choices in here. Thank you very much. Don't worry, the rosé wine isn't for me, it's for Holly. I uh, am on the, uh, the River Town IPA. So, but it's a, it's a gorgeous looking little bar, this. So. There is a little basement bar as well, indeed. But yeah, beer choices in here, much, much better than some of the other ones. I'll take a quick little sneak downstairs to show you the bar. So, can't get in there tonight, it's closed, but that is the, uh, the little bar downstairs as well. Two minutes, uh, well, a minute to be fair, um, past uh, the other weather spoons, past all bar one. Which again is another chain that I really have no time for particularly. And it will come to the hung, drawn and quartered on the corner of Byward Street, Great Tower Street. Iconic structure again, iconic London booze of this hung, drawn and quartered. Fuller's Pub always has a decent pint on, I'm sure. Should be some decent ales in here, hopefully. So that is our, 
I want to say 12th stop of the day. Uh, there were always going to be good ale choices on here. So I've gone for Flying Saucer. And I'm actually very impressed. At first, uh, at first swig, I am very keen on it. But this look, uh, look at it. I said Fuller's tend to have some absolutely iconically beautiful looking buildings. And this is just is another. So small, it's a small pub, but it's big in personality. Isn't it? Just look at so look how beautiful so it is in here. Absolutely stunning looking place. Sorry to downstairs, big old winding staircase down to them, but yeah, I think this is a uh, a top boozer all round. Absolutely buzzing place this. People sitting, sitting having dinner. It's just thriving, it's people in and out constantly. It's a real sort of staple of the London drinking scene around this area. And it's just a, it's just a gorgeous pub, this. I mean, the food looks good. But yeah, it's a constant stream of people in and out. And it is, it's one of those that I, I think gets overlooked a lot of the time when it deserves a lot more people to be going, making this a destination when they come to this sort of area. Definitely come. So the ale choice, that Salopian one I've got, Flying Saucer, really good. Straight out of the front door of Hunger on the Quarters. I, I absolutely love it, man. I feel bad for not doing Brewdog tonight because I love a Brewdog and that is a particularly beautiful looking Brewdog of where it is. But we're trying to we're trying to skip the chains, aren't we? Do the independence. So straight across the road from there is Feeney's Irish Bar. We have not done an Irish bar a week, have we? I don't think we've done an Irish bar a week. Considering we've been out to eight different places and all around we haven't we haven't found many irish bars so we're gonna we're gonna tip into feenies for our next tipple irish bar just opposite the hung drawn accord as with every irish bar there is a plethora of three yes a guinness, a guinness preparation station as you might expect and it is a pretty cool little place Better the old uh, the old irish uh, Sporting memorabilia, up. Uh, it's a cool little place. It is genuinely a cool little place. Cool, independent little Irish bar. Just on the outskirts, a tower. Good little Irish bar. Takes a takes a worth, worth of time to get served, doesn't it? Whenever you're waiting, when people are just ordering pint after pint after pint of Guinness. But it's an Irish bar, what more do you expect? So, walk back uh, to where all bar one is, turn left. Because just round, hidden on the back street, just here, Said the word pub <laughs> is seething lane tap. Anything that says tap in it is usually right up my street, isn't it? So seething lane tap, as it shows there, is a brew dog pub, apparently. So although we haven't actually done brew dog, this is a, a brew dog pub. So seething lane tap up next. So this one like it's, it's less commercially drawing than a normal brew dog, but honestly, I think it's better than an all brew dog. So look at that. That is one of the best beers I've had in a while. First time I've ever seen that on tap. So I was dead pleased to find it. All the, all the normal brew dog line up that you'd expect. But I think this place is tip top. I actually, I actually, I would say this is well worth it in over doing an actual brew dog. That, that King Crush, mega. Walk out of CB Lane tap, hang a left. Well, down at the end of that road, uh, hang a left again. We're kind of again one of London's most iconic backstreet pubs. Set on multiple floors. Let's see how beautiful that is. That is the ship. So this is the, the Tower Hill ship. I'm sure there are many ships across London, but not many that look as beautiful or as iconic, probably, as this one does. Car scales, full menu. It says more seating upstairs. It is a genuinely gorgeous place yeah look at that all the way up to the roof look at that beautiful little place this narrow high that's classic London isn't it? right let's do the ship it's an iconic looking little place girls having a girls having a mass sing song it's beautiful inside so since was that 1802 established this one the ales on gorgeous looking little place this isn't it but narrow windy stairs as you find a lot of places but yeah what a cool little pub this is you want a london party atmosphere what a good time come to the ship look. 
Friday night in London, baby. I love a Friday night in London. I love every night in London. <laughs> you, can't, you can't say the shit don't bring the party, can you? That's a hell of a party atmosphere, isn't it? We probably could have stayed in there all night. Holly was having a great old sing song and a bop. I mean, uh, loving a bit of Anastasia, you were, oh, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. Absolutely yeah. wicked. But, but some of us are still pretty professional, some of us are still working, some of us now need to get on, or else we're not going to get through stuff. Up next is the Crutched Fryer. Just it, beautiful, iconic again. Lots of accommodation and stuff above these days, but yeah, the Crutched Fryer will be the next port of call for tonight. So, in here is definitely a little bit more subdued than the ship. Belting beer lineup they've got in here. So, it's a mixer pub, so again, Stone Gate owned. Pub. And they always do, don't they, bring that little bit of extra craft. So I've gone for Vocations Crush Hour in here. It is quite late on for them, I suppose, to stay busy. But yeah, a little, it does feel a bit subdued in here. That's a great entrance, isn't it? Compared to what it felt like in the ship. But nice enough pub. Well worth a visit. Back up around the back. And definitely bring in another vibe in party because you can hear the noise halfway down the street is on a side street the windsor party pub it sounds like there's a karaoke going on so you never know maybe this guy will get on a mic it is like karaoke's karaoke's a bit party though someone's gonna sing pretty fly for a white guy it's not this guy but you know next up the windsor bring a little bit of pretty fly for a white guy Definitely being the party in there with the old karaoke. Right, third stone gate in a row, which does upset me a little because I'm not stone gate's biggest advocate. However, when you, when you find a pub, again, beneath the railway arch, like we started with earlier in Minories, can't turn it down. Recently refurbed and reopened, so I haven't seen this in many, many, many years. The Cheshire Cheese. There are several Cheshire Cheeses in London, three, in fact, that I can think of. This one is the Stonegate one, it's literally just reopened, it is in, it is technically in Tower Hill area. But again, it's a railway arch pub on it, so why wouldn't I love it? it? Smells very rich. So they reopened last week and it smells incredibly new. So they do sell us a couple off at the moment, but normally there were four ales on. So it is isn't it mixer and it is Stonegate, Stonegate, Stonegate through and through with regard to TV screens. But I've never seen these the Portobello stuff, so a little bit different, maybe. Worth a visit. Dead opposite Cheshire Cheese, we were literally about to go for a tube, but dead opposite Cheshire Cheese is Beer Keller. But it's called Munich Cricket Club. Shows up on Google as Munich Cricket Club. It's time for a nightcap, right? Always time for a nightcap. So it's part of the Beer Keller chain. Uh, it's called Munich Cricket Club, but there is no cricket club. Don't ask, I don't know. Humor. But it's part of, and you know, got myself a night. I told you I was going to go a nightcap, there's a tequila in there. I told you I was going to get myself a nightcap. Quick nightcap. Holly neglected to uh, to want a. Uh, didn't want a tequila, no? No. No. So bombs away. <laughs> Cheers all. Oh, that's good tequila, that. This one, that's good tequila, that. Cheers, brother. So, honestly, that was good tequila. Right, so with the exception of going back to Brewdog or uh, the Weatherspoons around here, that are both open until midnight, but it, we're going to end up on an hour's worth of night bus if we do them. There's not much value, is there, in doing that? I think we've done 20, so I think we've we've given you a really good little circuit to do around here. Some locals pubs, some uh, some gems, some old places, some party pubs. I think we've given you like honestly, follow this little route. Have a great night. We've had a great time. Have we had, have we had a great time? Yeah. This is a belting little place to go out drinking, and if you follow the route that we've been, you will find some absolutely belting pubs. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit subscribe because it helps us out massively. We'll continue to grow. We'll continue giving you good routes to follow. Uh, tomorrow is our first wedding anniversary. Hey, So, and a couple of pubs for us tomorrow. Probably no full feature length video and after the Back to the Future musical. But, thanks for watching guys. Love you all, see you soon.